time has come. All nations, all the means of communications, the Church of Jesus Christ, gather to hear the ruler of the Gentiles, the one who died, was resurrected, and returned to life. He has returned. The Lord is here. José Luis de Jesús Miranda The Man Christ Jesus Hello Blessed. Today's topic is Another Gospel. And now, The Man Christ Jesus. Verse 6 of Galatians chapter 1. Amen? Are we all there? It says, the Apostle Paul says, writing to the Galatian brothers over in Galatians, he told them, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed, as we have said before. So now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. It has always caught my attention when Paul says, if anyone preaches any other gospel, and then he says, or an angel from heaven. If an angel would appear from heaven, you know that people respect men with a lot of charisma. There's men that have so much charisma that they confuse and convince. But if an angel would appear, imagine an angel that would take on a body and appear to you preaching something else. The apostle demands you to be so firm to dare say, look, I'm sorry, I cannot receive that. Imagine if you visit a church and the pastor is a marvelous person, a decent person a Christian person, and you're visiting that church. And the brothers are very sweet. But what happened is that the pastor has left from grace. As he leaves grace, he's in another gospel. And being in another gospel, the church is cursed. And you're there innocently, ignorantly. Well, this is a church just like any other. Yes, it's a church just like any other. But from being deviated from the gospel of grace, you have curses there. And how does the curse start? Well, it starts in the lips of the pastor without him even knowing it. And you start to pay the consequences. All of a sudden, this couple is hurt. And then the church gets divided. And the word of God starts to disappear. And the sovereignty of God is not there anymore. Because then you have free will. And this and that. And then man starts to manifest himself in that congregation. Insulting the sovereignty of God. Galatians. Chapter 1, verse 8. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be what? Verse 7. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. In this case, you know who was the one that was perverting the gospel? It was Peter. How many pastors listen to me in the radio? Internally, they say, hey, he makes sense. I've read that. Let's see a starting point where you have to die so that grace can be. Well, let's read Romans chapter 9, verse 30, so that we can give it a background. Look what it says. What shall we say then? Are we all there? He, Romans 9. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, has not attained the law. 
of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. But I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Here's the trap. Pay attention. Don't fall in this trap. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Now look at this verse, which gives you the key. Be intelligent for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses, who writes about the righteousness, which is of the law, the man who believes those things. No, does. You see the difference between does and believe? When you speak of believing, you can't speak of doing. When you speak of doing, you can't be speaking of believing. And you can say, Pastor, but why does James say that man is justified by works? Well, I will explain that to you later. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, in the law, for you, to please the Lord, you had to do. You had to do your works. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. In the law of the faith. Faith is not foolishness. No, it's a law. It's a law. If you go in that law and you start to live by it, it's a law and you have to respect it as a law. A law has to come to your interior of your home. When you have the fear of God and you tell your child, look, don't say that because we're violating the law of faith. Turn that off because by the faith we are firm. So then the law of faith works this way. God says that I'm saved. Then I am. In other words, a different gospel, a different gospel is when the pastor says, well, yes, we are saved by grace, but you have to do and do. Right there, you see the deviation. As soon as the pastor says, yes, we are saved by grace, but if you do not repent, but if you do not do this, but if you neglect this, that's where you have a problem. And I know that this is delicate because you get thoughts of plotting and haughtiness. But pastor, we have to have discipline here. And if not, the brothers will go adrift. And what will people say? You have to establish your heart by grace. As long as you are not in grace, the Lord will not operate with you the way he wants to. Because you will be incredulous in your heart. You will stop God's marvels in your life. As long as you have doubt in this ministry, you will lose a lot of time. You will delay the plans. The Lord's grace has to be clear. And when it's grace, there is no boasting. Christ Jesus, you are everything to me. Don't